What up? What up? What up to people in the spot? What's good? My name is Dub Digital. I come up on the internet. I talk about crypto because I like doing that twice a week. Typically, I took last week off because, you know, I got personal things, personal things, but it's all good. Two people, what's good? How you doing? Oh, yeah. If you don't know, if you're new, I stream twice a week, two times a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time ish. I'm an island boy. Cut me some slack, y'all. Welcome back. Three people, what's goody? How you been? How you been? Let me know in the chat where you're at, where you're coming from. If you haven't followed me on X, what are you doing? Get over to X. Follow me. My handle is at Dub Digital, but with two U's. I guess it's Dupe Digital, but whatever. That's what we're running with. And then if you're on X, you don't follow me on YouTube, get over to YouTube. That's where I started at. At Dub Digital, that's the tag. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Oh, yeah, and Dub Digital is one word. So, you know, if you put in, like, Dub Digital 2 different words, you're going to find, like, some reggae crap, whatever. It's not me. I know my island boy, but that's not me, man. How you been? How you guys feeling? You feeling good? Feeling good? How's your life post-Bitcoin dump? Feeling feeling nice? It's good, man. I'm glad. I'm glad. See, you know how you you know how you made it? You're, you're leveling up is when, like, Bitcoin dumps and you don't care. <laughs> Man, I can't care anymore, man. I care too much. I care way too much to be caring anymore. It ain't that big a deal. Like we talked about, like we talked about. We're going to look at the charts. We're going to pull up the charts. We're going to look at some of the Bitcoin dominance. We're going to look at the crypto market cap because when things go down, that's when you learn more. You learn more when things go down. Everyone's a genius when things go up, right? But how come only? How come people only like to pay attention when things go up? You don't learn that much when things go up. <laughs> you don't learn much about projects when things go up. You don't learn much about yourself when things go up. You don't learn much about people when things go up. It's all when it goes down, y'all. That's when you learn the most, especially about what's on the inside. Investing's a lot about the inside, right? Reflection time. Sup, Dub? How you been? Uh, I got the growth mafia in the house. How's that airdrop? Was it good? Eight people, what's goody? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I know, I know. It's probably going to be a slow one because I took it last week off. But, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. But, yeah, I mean, to be honest, what is this? We're going to we're gonna measure it, okay? We're going to measure the drop. But, like I said, I don't think we're at 30% yet drop from the high. I mean, 30% is around 50000 That's not unheard of for Bitcoin. So what? You can't cry about every little drop, man. It's going to be a long cycle for you. It's going to be a long investing, investing, what do you call it? Career for you. If you worry about every single little drop, it's all good. Like I taught, like I told you this time and last time and every single time before that, we're at the right, right around the spot where we have chop. Right around the all time high, that's where we've always gotten chop. We've never not gotten chop. So I know it feels good, like, oh, well, maybe it's not going to happen this time. Well, you know what? Maybe, but now we know that's not the case. You could only invest in the world of which you live, not the world of which you wish you lived, you know? So the sooner we can get like honest with ourselves and be okay with that, the sooner we can move forward, the less we make mistakes, you know? Don't be all scared, but let's look at the fear and greed actually. That'd be good. Fear and greed index. Every single time there's a drop, you guys should be looking at coin market cap, fear and greed. Um, we got the halving coming up, man. Actually, you know what? Screw that. Screw that. We're gonna go into having counter. Cap having counter real quick. My bad. I should have this done. It is what it is. Guys, I got nine people in here and I only got one comment. What is this? Let me know who's at who where you're at. Who, who's here? Come on, guys. I'm just talking to a, a camera by myself. I got to know who's who's in the chat real quick. It makes me feel better. Um, Having. 
Let's see. Let's see. I got, I got this right here. Let me share my screen. Entire screen. Yeah, I like that. Bang. We got three days, three hours, 13 minutes, 30 seconds. That was 29 seconds. It's getting closer and closer by the second. Bitcoin having. Oh, man. This is going to be dope. It might not feel dope right now, but there's something that interesting going on this time around that is different than last time and every other time before that. And typically speaking, we usually breach the all-time highs of the previous cycle after the halving. We've done that before the halving. What does that mean? I have no freaking idea. I don't know. <laughs> okay, guys, but I want you to I want you to say something, right? Let's let's practice together. Say I don't know. I don't know. Get used to saying that. When you're investing, it's not about always being right and always having the answer. It's okay to admit things that you don't know. We're learning together. But all we do know is every single time Bitcoin has gone into the having, it excels out of, you know, it excels up out out of the all-time high of last cycle until this cycle. Well, does that mean they're going to have a sooner blow up? That does that mean I don't know what it means, but it means something. It's interesting. And this is the thing. When you have to understand like FOMO, right? What is FOMO? The fear of missing out. Why do people feel like they missed out? Because they get it wrong. Something's brewing. I know it. Something's brewing like every single time. Most of the people get caught out of the move and they jump in and pile in at the top. And that's why Bitcoin is so expansive and so exponential. It's because it's a bubble blowing machine. I'm here, Super Nerf. Super Nerf said it the best. More riskier to be out than in. That's what I've been saying. Here's the thing. If you've never been through a full-blown bull market, at a certain point, everyone jumps in. I don't care if you've been a hater for it for 10 years. I don't know if you've been like laughing at it. I don't know. I don't care if you, you know, everyone jumps in the Bitcoin just because Bitcoin goes so freaking high and it's all over in your face and it's just reminding you that you're late and you're you're missing out on these gains. You might as well get in sooner than later. <laughs> and that's why I'm not in the business of jumping in and out. That's a fool's errand. That's a beginner's, that's beginner stuff, you know, especially with the whole bag. Don't be a noob, man. I want better for you. 10 people, what's up? Let's look at the fear and greed index real quick. Oh, yeah. So it's good to see that thing back off. We were over here in the 80s, remember? Bitcoin, 73,000. Everyone was saying, we're going straight to whatever. Started to see the million-dollar Bitcoin headlines come back. I even saw a billion dollar now. <laughs> Crazy. It's good to see it come back. It's healthy. It's back it up, back it up, back it up, right? If we run this thing, pedal to the floor, 100%, 24-7, that's not a very sustainable market. We have this thing back off just a little bit. Give it some time to breathe. Let the weak hands get out. There are weak hands. Whenever anything goes up, very high. The weak hands jumping in because weak hands don't invest with conviction. They invest, invest with the herd. They're momentum investors, man. So you got to understand every single time you got big, big, big price, like appreciation on Bitcoin or altcoins or anything, anything in investing, they're going to have weak hands because weak hands aren't, they're not practicing mental fortitude. They're not like investing on the bottom. They're not going through the pain of the market. They want all the good things. They're jumping from this to that, to this, to that, thinking that they're participating in all these life-changing gains. But what they're really doing is just getting dumped on every single time. I mean. You got to understand, guys, people who pile in on the top, they're not exactly measuring their ROI. You know what I mean? Don't buy with Grandma Betty. Oh, man. How is she, man? How's Grandma Betty doing? She good? Good, good, good. Man, her apple cobbler is fire, bro. Mm. Hi. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. I like the rose. It's pretty. It's real pretty. But yeah, guys, I mean, look. Let's go look at the uh, do our heat check real quick. If you have a drop, what are you doing? You, you I know you're on Coin Market Cap anyway. Go up and jump onto Coin Market Cap. Scroll down. 
and then do this. See the highest gainers? Wow. Things are getting wrecked right now because the highest gainer is 1% over seven days. Oh, 37% down. Then uni, 36% down. I think there was, um, didn't they get, aren't they probably, I don't know if they come through yet, but probably going to get sued by the SEC, SEC, Security Exchange Commission, probably. That's interesting. Let's look at uni. That might be an opportunity. Because, you know, nowadays, crypto companies be fighting off the SEC with, like, success. <laughs> mm. But here's the thing, man. If you look at it from, like, a long-term trend, this is not that crazy. It's not like it failed. It just came up, back, retest. Over, what, three, four years? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, charting is charting, depending on what time frame you look at, man. But all I got to say is, uni, 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 uni's going to be okay. I mean, like, here's the thing. You can't really sue a DEX. They're going to, they, okay, so they close off their front end. You know you can, like, implement your own front end and interact with the back end of uni. There's going to be some devs that are going to do that. <laughs> you can't stop this stuff. It's it's so stupid. It's crazy talk. How are you going to stop decentralized tech? The only thing they can do is scare all the new people who got in here, like, oh, Uniswap's getting sued. How? How are they getting sued? Like, like, really think about that. If you understand the technology, what's the whole point of decentralized tech? To be decentralized so they can't sue people and squash them. Even if they sued, like, your favorite cryptocurrency. Sue them. I don't know who they're suing. Like, doesn't make sense, man. Doesn't make sense. Let's look at some more. What What else? Let's look at, let's look at the bloodbath, right? Yeah, 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 the bloodbath. Uni, Bonk is down 34%. Well, if you missed your meme coins, this is probably a good time to pick up meme coins. I mean, let's look at Bonk. 34% in seven days. I mean, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I think Solana's doing pretty good. I mean, this kind of looks like, I wouldn't be surprised if this thing comes down bottoms and goes back up like that. I mean, look at this. It looks like a W. In the making, if I've ever seen one, looks more like a W than an M, right? M is weakness. W is accumulation. Slope is pretty steep on this thing still. Stellana coins are doing better than most. I'll say Pepe. Look at Pepe. I just want to show you guys. Remember, meme coins were so hot. They're sexy. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's jumping around, going to base. To this, to that, to this, and that. Pepe's going to drop more too, man. Hmm. So this is why, man. You buy something that goes up parabolically, it comes down parabolically. That's the way of the world. That's the way of the universe, man. It's the laws of physics. You know, so this thing's going to come down low. If you missed it, you know, you could pick it up. It could be an extended amount of time before it goes off again because all these people are dropping like it's hot because they have no loyalty to any of these meme coins. Let's look at Normie. And that's why you can get into memes but know what they are. They're 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 a come up. They're a cash grab. That's what they always are. Normie's bouncing. It, it looks like it wants to come down lower highs. I mean, it has some support right here, but I mean, we've had two lower highs su since the the peak, right? This could be interesting. Base was just getting going before it took off. What is another base one? Brett. Let's look at Brett. How's Brett doing? I mean, Brett, it's pretty. It came out what? Uh, well, I don't know when it came out, but it came out on March 2024 on Coin Market Cap. This is interesting. I don't know anything about these meme coins, but I don't think anyone else does either. <laughs> what do you guys think? Proppy. Super Nerf says Proppy. Oh yeah. So think of all the. I guess you would say, what do you call it? Think of all the narratives that were popping up. Look at Proppy did. Proppy is old as heck, guys. This is like 2017 coin. They did the first real estate exchange on the blockchain using Proppy in Estonia in 2017. How do I know that? Because I'm old. <laughs> but man, this thing was taking off going and wanting to go to all-time highs. It's coming down again. So real-world assets, look. 
Everyone and their mom was so hot on real world assets right before the Bitcoin drop, but all of a sudden they get clammy, cold feet, right? They're investing based on narratives. When you invest on narratives, you don't have the fundamentals. You don't know if property's doing something good. You don't know if like this and that and what's actually happening. So you drop it. Oh, the bull runs over. See, that's that's the extent of some investors in crypto space. The bull runs over. You're just saying that because Bitcoin dropped, you know? Let's actually look at Bitcoin. Let's look at Bitcoin and see if this is like uncharacteristic of, of like where we are in the cycle. You want to do that? Let's do that. Let's go. Bang. We'll go in the month, man, so I can get it all nice and stuff, but then we'll go in the week. Okay. 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 So look, guys, this is Bitcoin's price from the from 2011, that's when it started getting tr actually tracked. There's two started in 2000, what, 10, 9? I don't even know. Long time ago, a year or two before this. But this is actually the tracking of Bitcoin. You can't see what's in the past, but we've had a good amount of time since it's been around to date. Okay. I got Bitcoin somewhere around here. Okay. So this is the cycle I came in with. I am an under the I am under the impression. That we're getting some kind of weird hybrid cycle now. I think cycling is actually lengthening. You know, like this pump happened more, like way faster than this pump, which was a little more sustained in 2017, which was the most consistent pump we had last um, in Bitcoin history. But if you look at 2007, um, 2013, it happened in two consecutive pumps. Like first phase, round, basing, second phase. I think we have some kind of much larger structure of that. It makes sense though, right? The bigger that market cap of something gets, the longer and more force it takes to move. We have that force now, right? This is when the first exchanges popped up for Bitcoin, you know, other than mining and all that. So a lot of money came in and re relatively came into Bitcoin. We have a lot of money that's about to come in from BlackRock. BlackRock dang near took this thing from here to there, but now we got Fidelity jumping in. We got all these people jumping in. We got people getting permission to buy the spot Bitcoin ETF that Fidelity is bringing. We got rumors of people in Hong Kong. I'm going to read that to you, actually. Yeah, I'm going to read that to you. Why not? Of, you know, they're going to approve spot ETFs for Bitcoin and Ethereum. You didn't think that it was only America playing the game, right? Everyone wants a piece of the Bitcoin Ethereum pie. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. But what I'm trying to say to you, I got I got distracted. <laughs> My bad. I do that. I go on little tangents, man. You should know this by now. What I'm trying to say to you is this. We don't need to see this right now. I'm going to remove this. Look at these red dots I have right here. One, two, three, right? This red dot occurred in 2017. This one occurred in 2020. And this one occurred in 20, uh, 2024. You guys are smart cookies, right? What's... What what am I trying to show by showing these little red triangles or squares? My bad. They happen at where the last all-time high of the previous cycle was, right? In 2013, we were here approximately March, February 2017. Um, we experienced some chop. I'll measure again from the high to the low. We experienced about 32% drop. Okay, that's why I say 20 to 30 percent drops in a Bitcoin bull run are the norm. Then it shot out of there, right? They experienced another what 43 percent drop on the way up. Shortly after, a 32 percent, 37 percent drop. It's only when the bear markets start to come we start to see those 68 percent drops. Okay, so to take us. So about 50 to 52,000 would be a 30% drop from the top we had in uh, in Bitcoin not too long ago, which is 73,000, okay? Again, let's zoom up. In 2020, we are pre approached the previous all-time high of about 20,000, which was a which was first hit in two, uh, December 2017. That was crazy. We experienced a 20% drop on that right around the all-time high. Then we ran up. But just to show you again the percentage, don't look at numbers. Look at percentage, 30% drop. Again, 20% drop. 
But then we start getting those large swaths, like at to the wick, it's 50% drop. Okay. I'm telling you this so you don't think this is like crazy and weird. It's part of the progress, right? The one thing that's different about this, even though we're right around where we typically see those bigger drops start to happen at the all time high, we might have some more to go. But like everything says to me, that this is the natural progression that we have to go through before we blow past it. It's only when you blow past it right here, you start seeing the headlines and everyone's a genius. Everyone. Even people who hated crypto's a genius. All of a sudden they forget. They would talk bad about crypto. Um, everyone is a genius here. We haven't got there yet. So right now you still got those people who are like, oh, I don't know. You know, they're sitting on the fence, sitting on the fence. The problem with sitting on the fence is you miss out on gains. At some point in your investing career, you have to make a call. You have to be okay with being wrong. There's always a chance that I could be wrong. All the people in the space could be wrong, but we're okay with that because history shows we're not wrong. <laughs> we could be wrong. And I could be like, you know, streaming this to you and telling you all this crap and look stupid. But that's the risk you take being an investor. If you're looking for something 100%, you are in the wrong field, especially crypto. You need to be like investing in an annuity. Good luck getting any kind of sizable money based on inflation off of that. But what I'm trying to say to you is this, guys. When we ran up to here last time, this is post-having. Having happened somewhere around here. I forget where the having happened here, but this was post having. We are pre having, and we've already went higher than all time high. What does that mean? That's interesting. Very interesting. What I will say though is we'll have to see what happens with this rising wedge right here. Okay, because um on the RSI, you can do like a measure move. It's not perfect, but we could we could try it out. Oh, well, I guess uh, that's pretty low. I don't I don't like that. I have to think more on that. But like I've been saying, I think the next area of support for Bitcoin, if we don't stop here, which we can, but you know, like I said, 30% is typically the thing. Somewhere around 40, uh, I'll say 50,000. Yeah. The reason I don't expect this thing to drop to death is because, like, what? Let, really think about it, guys. Really think about it, okay? If you're a BlackRock and you're a multi-billion dollar manager, the one of the biggest manager, market managers in the world, money managers in the world, you're going to come out and you're just going to launch a product and then you're just going to get waxed and laughed at? You're going to get wrecked? No. They're going to buy it up. <laughs> They're not going to let it go to zero. If anyone think they're going to drop jump in there and buy it. Right? If anything that's good for their product. Because you know like retail investors they think very short term, man. Very short term, right? Zoom out. Zoom out. You think these guys are just going to come up in here and get wrecked? No, they never get wrecked. They always win every single time they win. If they're here, that should be a huge vote of confidence for you and me because I remember being here when there was no countries in here. There was no institutions in here. There were no crypto hedge funds in here. It was just nerds trading on Coinbase, and there was only one coin on Coinbase. It was Bitcoin, and then it was Litecoin. No, Ethereum. Then it was Litecoin. There's three coins, okay? We are so much more better off now. Don't let a couple percentages shake you off the trade of the century. Hmm. Have some faith, man. Sometimes it's just like, you know, have some faith. You know, do what you got to do, man. Do what you got to do to get the faith. I'm going to be a hot summer. It's going to be a hot summer in crypto. I think so too, man. This is exactly what we need. It feels bad, right? But you know we have to go down a little bit based off of history, based on what I showed you, based off right here, before we can get that those juicy, juicy gains, right? Down then up, down then up. 
We're going down. You know what comes next? The up. That's what comes next. I think towards the end of the year, like I've been saying, October-ish, that would be six months post-having. Based off of my experience, it takes about six months to start to see like changes in the Bitcoin tokenomics to take an effect, right? This is a having event. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the newspaper says. You know what matters? That the supply of Bitcoin is going to get cut in half. And while there's still some circulating supply from the time previous to having, that supply will get dwindled away. It's going to get bought up. It's going to get huddled, especially probably faster than usual because black, like we got institutions that need the spot product to offer their product. And right around six months, watch this thing go up. Not financial advice, but watch it go up. And it's going to probably be going to be pretty, it's going to be special. You know why? Because now we have a whole class of people that could never get Bitcoin before. 401k money, pension money. Are you serious? The richest, the richest generation on the face of the earth can now buy Bitcoin easily. They don't got to leave their brokerage or nothing. Guys, this is what I was like. When I saw Bitcoin 2013, I was like, yo. This could be unlimited money. And I'm in before the banks. Yeah. This is the only time in history you and I could freaking offload our bags on, on banks and institutions. Yes. Yes. That's what that's what it's about. You know, like, look, guys, it's going to go up. It's going to come down. The reason it's going to go up from here is because banks are here. Institutions are here. BlackRock's here. The reason it's going to go down is because banks are here. Institutions are here. BlackRock's here. It's a double-edged sword. You know how it's going to go. Right? You know how it's going to go. Are you in runes? No, I'm not. No, I am not. So look, anything for clicks, I'm going to tell you a little story. A little story about a guy who got wrecked. I've been wrecked a couple times, right? It's uh, it's that's the truth, right? And like, I think we learn the most when we recognize how we did things wrong. So what I'm telling you guys is like, hard lessons learned. You can do it or not. But look, this is what I like to do now. I like to buy in the bottom, wait for my investments to go a year and a day in length, like for having in my possession. So I get the longer term capital gains tax, right? You could save 20% more on your money just by holding it like that. If you don't pay taxes, that's on you. <laughs> but like, if you want to be able to exercise it and buy things and actually like not look over your shoulder for the rest of life, you should probably pay your taxes, you know? And then I sell at the high. You know how I got screwed before? I would buy, sell, buy, sell, buy this, buy that, buy off the hype. Cool, cool, cool. That's cool. You know, but like I've also racked up a crazy tax liability doing all that. And I've also got I've also gotten profits that I worked so hard for from the bottom, tied it up in a new crypto investments at the top, and then they drop. I'm not trying to do that too much now. You could have like a bag, right? But just be just be aware. Every single time you sell crypto for another crypto, that's a taxable gain event. You could be caught in a situation. Or you do all these taxable gain events and rack up a crazy tax bill, then get wrecked and you don't have money to pay your tax liability. I'm trying to like let you guys know. It might be sexy jumping in and out on every single trend that pops up in the space. But there are consequences to every action, every single action. I'm just trying to give you a pro tip. I'm not in runes, but it's not because I don't think runes are cool or I don't believe in runes or they're scant. No, it's just because I've made my bets. I'm going to let it ride. I'm going to do it smarter this time. Less stress. 31 people was good. <laughs> Flirting with all-time high once it breaks, it's blue skies. Exactly. We're sitting at the sexiest point of the cycle right here. Just look around, guys. Look around. 
Remember how it feels. How many, how little people are here? I got 30 people. I had almost 100 people at the top. Look at people come in, come out, come in, come out based off their feelings. Guys, it's about to get juicy later this year. I really believe that. We're going to look at Bitcoin dominance in a second. Taxes. We talk about taxes. Not the gains. We talking taxes. That's AI. <laughs> Alan Iverson, he says, practice. <laughs> Pro tip, Coinly, exactly. I use Coinly. I use Coinly, but like just so you guys know. In, out, in, out, go here, good. That's why the meme coin thing, that's cool, man. But look at all those people who may, were bragging about making a thousand bucks into a million bucks. That's unrealized gains, bro. So you racked up $900,000 in tax liability and then you just got wrecked like 50%. Got to think of those things. That's part of being a sophisticated investor. Okay, okay, okay. Let's look at Bitcoin Dom. Bang. There we go. 30 people was good. Hey, give me a like, please. Give me a follow, please. Come on, bro. I didn't ask for your money, but you give me a like or a follow, right? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Give a little to get a lot. All right. Here's Bitcoin dominance, guys. I like to look at things in a very macro way. And, you know, like, you know, this whole structure I've drawn out is over <laughs> almost 5,000 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long term, long term. It doesn't matter where things go in the short term as long as you're positioned in the long term and have some patience. That's where you make the most money, okay? You made a lot of money capitalizing on this. This was this is an altcoin season unlike we've ever seen before, 2017. I think it's because mm -hmm. that's when altcoin economy really started to proliferate. We never had an altcoin um, market at any meaningful degree before then. I mean, we had a couple, you know, Feather Coin, Dark Coin, Doge Coin. We had a few, Light Coin. But you know, then it kind of exploded in 2017. 2020, they exploded even more. But it was a strange cycle in the fact that, like, the world was shut down, right? We're not in that case anymore. And the, a lot of the money that was printed during this time is still around. The world's doing somewhat better in the fact that we're not shut down and the supply chain's not wrecked to death. It's still not where it used to be, right? But I'm expecting at some point we're going to get another altcoin season like this. Reason being is, remember, we had this rising wedge in 2000, between 2020 to 21, and then it dropped down like that. We have the same pattern showing up. It started in 2021, October, and it's persisting still now, but it's three times bigger. In geometry, you have something called symmetry. Things aren't random. If you have a bigger, if you have like a bigger structure and like an effect, Typically, a bigger structure equals a bigger effect, right? And this thing's already showing you where it ultimately wants to go. This price popped out to the bottom in the beginning of this year, 2024, right? It violated the structure once, tried to climb in again, dropped out twice, tried to climb in again, dropped out three times. Now Bitcoin's running up because every single time Bitcoin drops, the whole market drops, and everyone starts getting out what they perceive as speculative investments and shoving into Bitcoin, which is what? The perceived digital gold, the perceived store of value. So the Bitcoin dominance actually goes up. Okay. This thing is probably going to go up somewhat. And the reason I'll, sh I'll show you this, right? Every single time there's a big drop, Bitcoin dominance rises up. We well, can't see it right there. But like, look, rises up, rises up. We never have one that just goes sideways, drops off. Unless you count like this. But you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have this drop. It's going to shake people out. I think this drop that we have here, or the Bitcoin drop, corresponds in the rising up when things come down. This was the, the COVID crisis. Everything went down to death. People thought Bitcoin was going to die. Bitcoin dominance rose up. 
Then it drops off a cliff. Right now, Bitcoin's dropping, doing its first maybe 30% decline of this cycle. It's going to rise up. I don't know to what degree, but then it's going to drop off. Why? Because, guys, most of the time, these structures resolve to the downside, and it's violated the structure more times than I can count. I don't got to know anything else. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. You don't got to believe me. Coinly is the best. Shut down and pump it. Shut her down and pump it. Yeah. 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 Shut her down. Turn the lights off. Let's go. Some point, guys, it's got to stick to it. I know how it sounds. You know, Dub Digital, you're telling me just like, just don't do anything? Yes. <laughs> don't do anything. <laughs> don't do anything, man. This is where we want to be. This is what we thought, right? Didn't you go through the bear market, right? Did you think this would happen? We used to be at 17,000. Now it drops from 73,000, goes down to 63,000. Everyone thinks it's the end of the world. No, it's not the end of the world. You're listening to noobs. Don't listen to the noobs. They weren't here. They don't know. They don't know, right? Remember, we went from 17,000 all the way here. I remember a time we used to be at 100. And then I went to 73,000. Every day, I have my mind blown. Just remember where we came from. A little pain to get a lot of gain. It's going to come. But how are you guys feeling about it? How are you feeling about it? Feeling okay? Feeling bad? Feeling sad? Oh, yeah. Let me, let me read that news article regarding Hong Kong. Because, you know, sometimes you got to get out of your little bubble. You know, not everything happens in America. And this is why I said, as the world is so concerned about the war, watch what the other hand is doing. You can check it out here. Follow me on X at Dub Digital with two U's. Let's take us to Coindesk. I'm going to read it for you. It's a little story time. How about it? Coinly stop. BTC ETH rises Hong Kong Bitcoin ETF applicants say they've been approved. The Security and Futures Commission, Hong Kong's market regulator, has not made an official announcement. Bitcoin has risen over 2.8% over 24 hours, trading above 66.5 thousand. Ether has advanced to its 3.2K, according to Coindesk indicate da indicate Indices data, as multiple issuers in Hong Kong said they've been approved for, been approved for spot Bitcoin or crypto exchange traded funds or ETFs. China asset manager Posera Capital and other applicants posted to social media platform WeChat that they have been approved to list spot Bitcoin and Ether ETFs in Hong Kong. However, these announcements seem to have front run an official statement from the Securities and Futures Commission, SFC, which was not posted, which has not posted a list of approved issuers. Some of the posts have since been deleted. The, FSC, the SFC did not return emails or phone calls asking for comment. Singapore-based digital asset trading house QCP Capital said in a message shared with Coindesk that it believes the ETFs, when approved, will unlock some of institutional demand during Asia trading hours. Bingo. Participants who wanted exposure have always been limited to U.S. hours, but this now gives institutional investors an Asia-based Asia -based alternative. QPC wrote, we believe this will be bullish short term, but there are more important narratives and drivers such as macro events. They're referring to the wars in Ukraine, the wars, Israel, and um, you know, Iran coming in the mix now. But this is the thing. If you were here in 2017, it was wild. You woke up in the US, Bitcoin's pumping. You go to sleep. Asia takes over. It's pumping even more. We haven't had that dynamic all the way since then. America's been leading the ETF push, but wait until the rest of the world catches up. That's when that's when we're going to get 2017 light gains. You guys know how it was. You go to sleep, what the heck? It's almost like you couldn't sleep. <laughs> and it sounds like that's going to start coming back because, guys, you got to know. All these countries getting involved in wars, proxy wars with the United States. What are they? Who are they? 
BRICS nations, Russia and Ukraine, right? Iran and Israel. Uh, little birdie probably is going to tell me at some point. I know, it doesn't tell me. China's going to go after Taiwan. Don't you think it's funny they're all BRICS countries? Wow. It's almost like they're trying to like fight, like exhaust the United States resources, right? Like have a, a multi battlefront battle. This is uh, this is guerrilla war tactics, man. And then at some point, the banking system is probably going to come under pressure. We already heard your own pals say there's probably going to be bank runs at some point, but it's not going to be at the big banks. Guys, it is going to become so clear one weekend when all hell breaks loose. <laughs> and that's when Bitcoin is going to have its chance to shine because before Bitcoin's anything, it's not this financial instrument. Bitcoin's not this store of value gold narrative. You know what Bitcoin is? It's a way to get money from point A to point B without anybody having to give approvals because a lot of the world has been sanctioned by the United States through the SWIFT system. Russia lost like billions upon billions of dollars in the United States banking sector. Everyone saw that and said, screw that. Crypto's real catalyst event is going to be coming from the geopolitical sector. I'm telling you. When countries start using it, man. To go around the United States. Sit back and enjoy the movie. That's what it is. When I... You know, in 2016, I was reading about like Russia, you know, getting sanctioned by the United States. It's not even to this degree that we have resulting from Ukraine. But I thought about it, I was like, why don't they use crypto? If I could think of that, me, dude in a room on the internet, you think some of like the smartest people in Russia can't think of that? Come on now. Don't be so naive. 35 people, what's up? But yeah, guys, um, we looked at dominance. We look at total three. All the money wrapped up in crypto minus Ethereum and Bitcoin. Total three would be good. Let's see it. Okay. So the RSI on the weekly was pretty overbought for a while, ever since the beginning of the year. It's come down from that territory, which is healthy, okay? We broke out of this ascending, um, at this rising wedge, right? Rising whatever, my bad. I might not use the right term, but you know what this is. Okay, the measure mood says the crypto market cap minus Bitcoin and Ethereum could probably hit around $7 trillion. That's what I believe. That's what the geometry suggests, Okay. We had an initial breakout around February of 2024. From that breakout, we ran pretty good. 45% up. We hit around almost $800 trillion, um, $800 billion. $800 trillion would be a lot, but $800 billion. And we're coming back down from that initial breakout about 26%. Okay. We could come back down more, right? I mean, it would be very clean for it to come all the way down and touch. But that doesn't mean it's bad. What that means is it's just a retest of the breakout. That happens all the time. It's shaking out that initial resistance you have. The initial people trying to recoup losses. I call it gravity. When you're at sea level, it's hardest to overcome gravity. But you shake off a little of that gravity because you're a little higher. A little higher. You start fighting against these resistance uh, lines right here. And then we break out. This total three market cap is just is just simply lagging Bitcoin like that it always does. All coins always lag Bitcoin, but then all coins go on steroids and melt faces. It's not gonna be any different, you know. People who say it's gonna be different are people who haven't been in this in the sector for very long, just to be honest. So, you know, protect the information that goes in your head. Just because they're louder doesn't mean they're better or smarter. I'm just saying, 36 people, what's up? What's good? What's good, homie?
What's on your lips, man? Is that powdered donut? <laughs> nah. How's Dave Chappelle doing, man? He's good? I know he went to Africa. He's still... I don't know. I've been hearing crazy stuff about Dave Chappelle, man. I heard he's a clone. Just kidding. <laughs> you never know nowadays, man. You never know. But yeah, I mean, the world's getting pretty wild, isn't it? Fed is lying about the CPI. CPI is screwed, man. Iran's all, all up in the fight now. They're a big oil producer. Watch oil double. Watch oil go up to where we were seeing in 2021 again. Over here in Cali, it was $7 a gallon. Watch it go into double digits. And the reason you need to know about all these commodities is because a, like, inflation has a progression. It moves into certain sectors first based on the supply chain. What is the most integral thing to global trade? Oil. What is the most integral thing to like waging modern war? Oil. Oil shows the inflation first. The reason inflation came down from 2021 all the way to now is because the United States was selling the strategic re, um, the strategic reserves. We never refilled it. So now, you know, like we don't have any kind of buffer to protect us from inflation. You know, things are expensive now. Get ready. I'm telling you, get ready. It's going to get crazy. And you heard that here first. Dancing in some alley. <laughs> Man, the Chappelle show is dope, right? Mm. Man. Getting old, man. I'm my 90s, baby. I was thinking back at Super Nintendo the other day. I was playing Super Nintendo with my wife, actually. It was dope. Yeah, Super Nintendo was bomb. They don't make video games like that no more. Not anymore. That was good. Like, could you imagine, like, a platform just carrying itself on Mario alone now? <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Yup. Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't watched the Pell Show, what are you doing? Go watch it. 36 people. Yeah, I, I don't know, guys. Like, I guess I could throw up. I do this sometimes. I invite people to come up and speak. Just get your idea on the market. You could chalk it up, right? It's, it's a collaborative show, y'all. So I'll drop the link in the chat. Sometimes people take me up on it. Sometimes they don't. I don't take it personal, right? It's right here. You can click on it. You can come up, say what's up. Let me know what you're thinking, um whatever chop it up um or i could just keep monologuing keep monologuing but yeah don't be shy guys i like to put voices maybe even a face but you know definitely a voice to the names this is a family first and foremost you dig cool 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 but yeah guys i mean like what i don't know what's gonna happen but what i do know is they're going to print. You know why? This is an election year. Oh, yeah, they're going to print. Unless they just want to let, you know, <clears throat> Papa Joe just fade into the darkness. <laughs> I don't see that happening, man. I don't see that happening at all. I think typically, technically, the, the Fed tends to show up on election years. And we even, you know, I don't know if you guys follow uh, Project Veritas. They're reporting. I don't know how you feel about their reporting, but they do some kind of like sting guerrilla journalism where they like pay girls to go out on dates with these dudes at these high ranking places, get them drunk. <laughs> well, they don't get them drunk. They get themselves drunk and they start singing like canaries about stuff. And they just had one on the someone who worked at the Federal Reserve. Um, yeah, a chief economist from the Federal Reserve. And he was talking about how the Fed gets very political about how they make policy. I won't say anything else about that. You can find them on X, but that's a very interesting interview. There's one on, on FISA, on Pfizer. There's one on, uh, what else? The IRS. It's interesting, man, you know? And I looked up the dude from the, the you know, person that allegedly works at the Fed. He's on the Fed website. <laughs> Project Veritas. Yeah, I'll send it to you. It's more scary to think why would they burn through the backups and not replace? Sounds like some enemies within. 
Guys, there's a African um saying. It was like, if there's no enemy within, the enemies outside can't do us no harm. You know, that's the main thing. Yeah, and this is what it's called, man. Like, modern warfare is not waged, like, in your face anymore. It's very subvert. It's very, like, under the radar. It's like paying this person off and that person off and bribing this person. That's what happens. Now, I'm not saying, like, I know for sure in the government, but, like, if you pay attention, some of the some of the decisions they make just seem strange, right? It seems like it's almost not in the best interest of the American people. Well, would you look at that? I mean, you know, it's not like any government's ever been corrupted before, huh? <laughs> I mean, I think most of the governments in the world have been corrupted at some point, right? 100% of the time, actually. Okay, okay, let's look. Uh, let me try to find you these links. What's his name? What's the guy? Dang. Is it Nick something? My bad. Yeah, they're cool, though. I mean, it's funny, man. You got to be careful what you look online, but you could find some fake stuff online, but you could also find some real stuff online. And I think it's a mistake to assume anything's one way all of the time, right? Like, you have to take things with a grain of salt, but, like, don't just write it off. Do your research. Look into it. And if you start to stand up, you know, then, okay, then you may have to take that in consideration. Does anyone know the guy's name He who's releasing the emails? I'm looking at the Veritas website, but I think I have it on uh, on my book notes, bookmarks. My bad, guys, my bad. Oh, I got I got someone. Hey, um, whoever pressed on the link to come talk, it says device is not connected. I don't know how to help you with that, but um, it's saying the device is not connected, so I can't bring you up. It's not letting me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. James O'Keefe. And I'll send the uh, Fed video. I got another one. One second, one second. I'll bring you up right now. But let me get this. Check out this video from the Fed. He works there. I looked into it. RL Hismo or whatever. Check that out. Right there. Have fun. I hope it is fact checked. <laughs> Who's fact checking, man? fact check no one asked that <laughs> i like to check my own facts as far as i know the dude works there he's on their website dot gov and that's funny because the fed is not a government agency but they have a dot gov domain that's crazy what's up what's up what's going on man? how you doing See, i'm chilling chilling and just I'm hey, hey can you guys let me know if you hear him on the chat please can you hear me hey man a little faint a little faint. Can you hear me now? Better now, better now. All right, my bad. Um, I'm just actively trading, but um, I think the last time we talked, we were, in, I mean, the price was higher. And I was saying the target, if we didn't, you know, continue on, um, was 50K, you know, just bracing people for that potential target. You know, it doesn't have to get there. But I mean, right now, crypto, I think there's a lot of innovation happening. I think someone mentioned about rooms or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of looked into that that um, that sector a little bit. Um, and that seems, I mean, if what they're saying is true and allowing um, like smaller cap, like or basically like shit coins to be um, on Bitcoin, I mean, that brings in some type of, some type of, you know, hype um, and some liquidity, potentially. The only issue is with all these, all the development of Bitcoin, you know, it's the fees. But, I mean, really, I was just checking it and just let everybody know. I mean, for the most part, nothing has changed. Um, 
The only thing that worries me is the, the stock market right now, because I was mentioning that last time that the NASDAQ has a weekly bearish divergence forming, and that's actually starting to play out. That's why you really start to see a pullback in uh, crypto and maybe in the stock market as well. Um, and so that has, that still has some time to play out. So you're probably looking at the next like three to six months of a, a correction. And I mean, we'll take it from there. By that time, it's probably um, uh, late, late, late summer, maybe the fall. And you got the election and stuff coming up, so we'll see. But that sounds about right in my yeah. mind. You know, like um, yeah, yeah, things will turn up during the election for sure. The, the one thing I really wanted to mention was, which really concerned me honestly, is the all queens. Um, a lot of them, especially the older ones. I mean, the older ones are not really doing much. They're not performing as much as well, which is a lot of coins for even last cycle that are not like tracing. Um, so that's very concerning. Sure, they're not what? They're not. They're, they're not retracing. They're not like rebounding at all. Um, actually, making you know lower lows, not making higher highs, higher lows on a larger time frame, and so. I mean, it's kind of weird and weird. Like, this cycle has been weird. It hasn't been as um, repetitive as the, as the previous cycles. As, mm -hmm. like, before, you know, even coins that haven't, um, you know, you don't even think about, they moved, but there's just no liquidity in them at all. Um, so that's very concerning. It's really just been Bitcoin. And if, you know, the newer coins, the newer, like, hype cycle coins and a few alts have, have retraced a little bit, like Ethereum and Doge a little bit, but I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a weird cycle. Um, well, you know, the Bitcoin dominance charge really hasn't dropped to any meaningful degree. I think the lowest it went was like 3% down. You know, it's like, we've seen some gains, but it... It's been a very select, like funneled into select coins, you yeah. know. But I think at some point we're gonna get a broader drop. Um, but even 2020 was weird in 2021, right? Like we started seeing decorrelation in 2017. Everything went up together. Right? We had like super mania, in 2017. Well, I um, think I think so more so in 17. It was because you didn't have your stable coins yet, and so. Everything went up in unison because you had to buy Bitcoin to get into other coins. And in the 20 cycle, you know, more prevalent was the stable coins. Um, and, but that was mostly kicked off from DeFi. Remember like in 2020, 2020 summer, um, a lot of those, those platforms started to grow. Um, that was your rise in Ethereum. Because a lot of those DeFi pro projects started with Ethereum and it went on to other change as the cycle went on. But this time, it's, you know, DeFi has been dead this whole cycle, really. Like, the the hype hat behind that has been, like, even those coins haven't moved that much at all. Um, mm -hmm. So, I think, you know, right now, I think the, the biggest play is just looking at Bitcoin, even though, I mean, just looking at the drop, you know, this alts drop like 20, 30%, Bitcoin moved down 5%. So, you can see there, like, the liquidity is in Bitcoin again. Yeah, well, yeah, you can see on the dominance chart too. I mean, yeah. people run into Bitcoin because it it drops less. But um, I think, I think yeah, you bring a real point about the stable coins. But like you know, if inflation gets like serious, there could be less of an incentive to hold stable coins, right? Like they'll be seen less stable. And I just don't see like if this. It depends like what happens really with like you know the war. If we get into a war, you can't, like, they're going to have to fund the war. You know, like, they're going to have to print the money. Um, inflation's go. It, it, it's just really, the thing is all driven by inflation. What happens is all driven by inflation. And I just don't see a world where inflation goes down very much. I mean, the Fed's not going to raise the rates unless, okay, they're going to have to raise the rates to, like, double digits. You know, that's going to crash everything. And they're not going to do that in the election year, right? They might do it at some point. But um, I think at some point, like, we're going to have some kind of crisis. I mean, Jerome Powell's kind of hinted at that. He's talking about bank runs later, like, but not at the big banks. I mean, that's what he said. 
you know, so I think something's going to come down the line that's going to change things up. I mean, like, you know, who would have seen COVID happen in 2020? That, like, changed the whole landscape for crypto. So I think something's going to come, but it's going to be, like, you know, kind of a wish and a prayer until it happens. That's what they call the black swan. But we'll see. We'll see. I think later on the year, like you said, uh, crypto is going to be much higher. Why? I don't know. But, you know, I think consolidation is somewhat healthy here. Yeah. If you look at the um, like the metrics, like, as far as, like, the economy, I mean, the only way inflation comes down is if the economy crashes. That's the only way it comes down. And so, really, the Fed, that's what their goal has been, is to, you know, damper the labor market, um, to have the market um, correct itself with, you know, higher enough interest rates. But it, it hasn't worked because there's, they printed, to me, they printed too much money. Um, there's too much capital um, being out. That still need, that people are still allocating and seeking a return. Um, but I don't know, man, it's, it's just a weird market. I just, I, mean, I don't know, I can't call it as far as like, honestly, I don't want to say this is like um, the market cycle top because I mean, this would be, you know, unprecedented, but what, what this has me, like I, I said it last time, has me worried is the overall stock market, the way it's looking. Um, Cause you could get a real, real, real pullback in, in these in, in the traditional markets. Um, but like you said, they are going to have to print money depending on, you know, the war and everything else. Going yeah. And, and, and you know, the interest rates, they, they've already raised the interest rates to where it's like, we're paying like trillions of dollars just in principle, I mean, not in their principal, exactly. but in our interest. Yeah. So yeah. it's like they kind of are in a rock and a hard spot. Right. And like, if you were a politician, think about which, what, what would you get away easier with? Right. Like, would you just like slowly inflate it away and like you'll get to like, you'll get phased out and new people come in. And it can't be like really painted on you. But like, if you drop the economy on your, in your administration, everyone knows you did it. You know, yeah. like these guys are trying to, kick the can down the road and i think the easiest way to do that is continue to inflate so um i don't know if they can though i don't honestly i don't know if they can to because continue inflate i don't know if they can kick the can because i mean they can but i don't know if it's it, how effective this is going to be because you know well, it's it, not going to be good right <laughs> none of this is going to be good right it's all I bad mean, the election's over already like barring Barring, you know, something happened to Trump, he's going to be president. Like, so the, the next administration is coming in. Like, that 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 whole thing is over. The whole my thing is right now is looking at looking at these charts. It just it just doesn't look as promising. Like, you know, you have commodities still rising. Like you got gold and silver going crazy. Um, but I don't know. Every other market just still looks looks iffy at best well gold going crazy the indicator of like inflation like worries you know um more so like to safety more than inflation i think i've said, i read an article and i looked into it a little bit more like the whole like uh, the inflation argument for gold is not relevant honestly it's not, it's not true even look at the you know they're putting all the money in um between like 20 and 22 like gold didn't move at all well, I mean, it's spoofed. It's spoofed. It's a spoofed market. You have the the paper determining the price of the physical, which happens in no other market but gold and silver, right? Like, they have to control these alternatives of the dollar because if silver went to what it's supposed to be, you'll know the dollar's trash. If Bitcoin went to what it's supposed to be, you know the dollar's trash. It's all about, like, a perception of control, you know? Um, and they do it in certain mechanisms. Like, we got that Bitcoin ETF, the first one, that was cash settled. You know, and a banker came out right before before they released it and said, we're going to tame Bitcoin. I don't know if many people remember that. You know, they they have financial uh, tricks they can play to keep you in the system. But I think, you know, more and more people are realizing that their dollar is not going as far as they want it to. I mean, you know, forgot the I mean, stat, but like you get 40 percent less than you did in 2021 or 2020. I mean, that's that's the trade off. That's the that's the printing. But. I don't know. This to me, this is not going well because there's no good. There's not really a good solution other than like some type of reset, and 
who even knows what that looks like. So. Well, um, there's a book. There's a book. It's called uh, The Great Taking. I've I'd read it. I, I think I've plugged it a lot. But make sure to go check out on YouTube. It's free. You know, The Great uh, Taking. He, this guy, he's basically been in, like, the hedge fund world his whole life and worked with lawyers and stuff. And he said they've legally put into place how they can, like, take assets based off of, like, mm -hmm. assets bought on debt. You know, and... They can, they can go into your bank account and just, just take whatever, you know, and Yeah, pay. bail in. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if those laws are in place. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what, what it's going Yeah, on. but where I was going with it was, like, um, basically, everyone thinks that, oh, if there's a, like, everything collapses, the debt collapses, it's going to be a debt jubilee. But the guy explains in the book, that's not necessarily the case. They'll just take that, that debt and transition over to the new system, mm -hmm. right? So if they do that, right, they can maintain control over most people. But also, wouldn't it make sense for them to hyperinflate the debt? I mean, hyperinflate the money so they can pay their debt, and then they transition. They don't want to carry their debt over, you know? So I, I just mean, think, you know, they're going to do something tricky like that, but we'll see. If they're controlling the, the, the game, they don't have debt. It's just they control the game. I mean, but it, I'm not, like I said, to me, we're getting, we're getting close to, I'm not saying like next week or something. I'm saying the next like few years, probably the next election cycle, not this one, but the next one, there's probably going to be some type of reset on, the, on like the way the system is, is running. Um, and I think historically, like just looking at what's emerging with the, like AI and, and um, other technologies that are starting to replace human labor, there's going to have to be some type of um, new system and new uh, with a new system you're going to have new economic rules so i mean i don't know it, it just it this is just extremely un, un you know sustainable you can't sustain this type of debt and you know just this game like this is to me this is one game this is one big game <laughs> well that's where the cbdc comes into play you know yeah, yeah. so they can pay you on that on an app. Remember, like, during the, during the yeah. lockdowns, they paid, like, a bunch of money to dead people because they couldn't find people. Like, they make you download the app. They're going to send the money to the app. And, like, there probably, at some point, will be some kind of, like, contingencies. Like, you can't buy this. You can't pay this. Or, you know? And they're going to control you a little bit more and more. But, cool, man. Yeah, Appreciate man. your thoughts. No problem. Cool, cool. All right, guys. This has been about an hour and seven. I come up on here twice a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Make sure to follow me. Um, oh yeah, let me let me let me plug real quick. Let me plug. You guys don't know I'm the head of um public relations at Player Chain, which is a blockchain multi-chain gaming infrastructure launching on a uh, Avalanche subnet coming a couple weeks, right? Uh, uh, so like may, be on the lookout. We just released our white paper, which is pretty extensive and a white paper on the previous token zoo, um, which is now being rebranded to gamer. So make sure to check it out. There's also going to be some interesting opportunities regarding um, nodes. If you like nodes, uh, maybe uh, opportunity for some passive rewards. If you like that, make sure to follow at on P L Y R player player chain. But until next time, guys. It's been fun. Talk to you later. Peace.